Greetings and welcome to Unrig the Game. How's everybody out there doing this evening? Hope you're all living well and having a good day. A good week so far and all that fun stuff. A little different day for Unrig the Game. Doing it on Tuesday night tonight a little bit earlier. Hope everybody is aware of the um, the difference this week and can make it tonight. Uh, so we're going to get into that and I got some stuff for the kickoff show. So, uh, first and foremost, let's thank Wolfram for dropping the links. He wipes his paws, he lips in, and he howls. He's here, ladies and gentlemen. And there is Shelly talking trash and truth right there, saying hello. And, um, yeah, I'm expecting kind of a slow, slow wind up this today since we've moved times and uh, moved days for today, tonight's show. Um, so as people get their new if they get their notifications right if they get the, hopefully they'll be in here soon and um we'll get the full full on crew here maybe we'll even get some new people in since it's a different time and different day let's hope so um but yeah how you how are you doing welcome how's it going we got time for some one-on-one -on -one time here get some one-on-one -on -one time and get a little bit of a crowd here and i'll get into my kickoff topic tonight which is going to be a good one um like I was saying in the, um, I don't know if everybody sees the community posts, but um, I said in the community post kind of like what I'd be talking about tonight um, in that uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking about how real psyops never get called out while fake ones gain internet fame, you know, and that and a few other things um, just to kind of kick us off revisiting topics that are important to the betterment of our world, how we unrig the game. We got to talk about how it's rigged, right? See, I've been doing good. Been 70s here for the past few days. Yeah, it's really nice here. It's been in the low 80s. Low 80s. It felt really good, like a nice spring day today. But, you know, with the spring day comes the, the, the spring pollen. And that's got me on a roller coaster a little bit. Um, you know, between uh, feeling uh, it with, with me at the, with the Georgia pollen down here. It just kind of wears on you. It kind of wears you down. And then you throw in, and I've been dealing with a sciatic issue for I don't even know how long now. I can't remember when it started. Like it's been at least four months, four or five months of different things. I've been trying to get it right. So I don't know what the heck I did. <laughs> That's a fight right there in itself, you know? It's a fight in itself to gain the energy and uh, to do things. Because when you're hurting like that, that one area, it like it takes more. I guess it takes more energy. I don't know. But then you throw the pollen on top of that, and I go, "It's, it's my, really since my birthday. That's when it started. So that's what's we're in the fourth month of the year, halfway through. So that's uh, what that's in a November, December, or so six months, half a year. I've been dealing with it. Yeah. So it's 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 been a fight. But if I, I'm hoping that uh, one day it'll be, uh, I know the pollen will go away, <laughs> but I, uh, I don't know. I, at this point, I'm like, whatever it takes, you know, because I've tried many different things. Um, I don't, I just haven't found the right thing yet, but yeah, yeah. So anyways, the weather's been great. It's been great. I've been trying to get out in the sun a little bit during the day and, uh, you know, just my basic spring and summer routine. Try to get out in the sun at least once a day and enjoy that and get that vitamin D 
And uh, shut it. Quiet, Shelly. I already know where your mind's going. <laughs> uh, but it is a vitamin. And there is a vitamin with a D in it. Yeah, right. Can't say nothing. I'm going to talk normal. All right. I'm going to talk normal, even if it makes funny jokes. <laughs> so if, if, if making corny jokes uh, when you get older are dad jokes, you know, anything that's kind of quirky. Is making sexual jokes when you get older mom jokes? Just wondering. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's 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 the deal here. Uh, but you know, a few more weeks of uh, of the pollen, and uh, that'll that'll hopefully be a non-issue. Cougar jokes. I mean, but if it's gonna be called dad jokes, then shouldn't it be called mom jokes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Need something, right? Need something. Okay, so I'm like totally like just walking this uh, kickoff show in. Hopefully, uh, we did the advertising. I just don't know if you know YouTube is advertising for us as well. I don't know if people get their notifications. New day and time. Hopefully, everybody knows to be here tonight. So the kickoff show. I really want to talk about this topic to a to a big crowd because it's pretty good. Um, so we'll get started, and the rewatch crew can jam on out. We got a few more people rolling in here now. All right. We've got four over our next. How's we doing on Rumble? We got six over on Rumble. Good. We're kicking it off. New time, new, a different time, different day. So, um, like I said, I'm kind of expecting a slow roll up on this one. Uh, and I want to get um, into talking about uh, the book itself um, as we, we do the jump over before we start. Just do like kind of like halfway through checkup on it, see how everybody's thinking, what they think about it so far, and get your opinions. But let's kick this show off with this. I got a couple different videos I'm going to uh, be stopping and talking about as we go. This is not more informative. It's more like um, there's points being made that I want to comment on. There's a couple different ways that I do it. You know, um, sometimes sometimes it's purely educational. I want it to play out. Like later on, like when we read, I like generally like to leave it pretty much reading, you know, just let the reading happen for people who just want to listen to the book mostly. So my comments in here and there. Um, and then make any kind of like, you know, uh, statements I need to make, like, you know, like if he brings something up that I don't necessarily agree with, uh, you know, I'm going to definitely uh, say why, you know, like the, you know, anything, any kind of things that I, um, I've i either debunked or um, I'm not, uh, I'm not on board with. I'll, I'll say, you know, I, like I said, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily toss out uh, people, uh, media outlets and so on just because i don't agree with everything now in, the, in the establishment yeah because i know that they're all owned and operated um and uh, on agenda but i mean you know for some of the other people like i realize that it's a journey right that mostly what i do here on the channel is talking about the journey the journey away from the establishment narrative and what that's like and i discuss different rabbit holes you can fall into right and then and i'm just really being a roadmap and a guide based on my my experiences i, I was in a, a generation before in terms of waking up and getting uh, free from it, right? To help all the people now that are just coming into it with all the craziness in the world, have a clear, concise roadmap of place to go um, where they don't have to be, but they can focus on the real issues at hand and are, don't have to dive into these 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 really uh, nonsense kind of like deep down the rabbit hole conspiracies that just never pan out. I'm going to talk, talk about that as we go here. And like I said, on one of the key things we're going to talk about tonight on the kickoff show is why do why the real psyops never get called out for what they are, and the fake ones, you know, gain internet fame. Like they just they just take off like wildfire. And of course, you know some of the ones I'm referring to. But um, we'll just get into the videos, and we will uh, we'll take it from there. And you'll see as I comment. So um, First off, let's bring in Mark Dice. This is great. Uh, he's got <laughs> this. I was watching this. I didn't think it would, this video would go in the direction it did, but it's got a little bit of comedy to start out. Comedy to start out with. Hey, T Rex Trucking, how you doing, man? Uh, and uh, and then it goes into some of the points I want to make. And like, if you didn't know about some of the psyops that are actually happening right now, I'm going to point those out too. These are real ones. You know, I talk about the real ones. I don't talk about the 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 speculation and the fear mongering and the and the you know lack of um, what I just call like just lazy research, this laziness 
um, soul dependency on bad sources, things like that. So we're, I'm going to cover all that. But let's just know what Mark has to say. And again, I'm going to be doing a lot of stopping and commenting through this. The mainstream media are no longer fun. Like the times we had mocking the Democrats and the liberal media for obsessing over Russia Gate and Trump's tweets and the mostly peaceful protests at the Capitol. Hold on, one quick. Uh, thanks again to all the members at the bottom. I didn't mention this. So I, I got to get my routine right. Um, okay, so yeah, thanks to all the YouTube members. The, all these people are smart because they buy a uh, they pre buy a super chat a month, and that really helps the channel. So I do appreciate that, and they're part of the winner circle, which is a great place to be. Um, and um, so thank you guys very much. Thank you guys very much for that. And we also. Uh, also want to say yeah you know i was trying to think about how to describe my channel to new people or how to um how to uh let me put this right here for a second how to uh kind of like tell them you know look i do a lot of long streams with a lot of topics on them i get it not everybody wants to go back and listen to three or four hour streams you know just to kind of catch up but the the journey and unveiling reality and other shows like that leads you like i was talking about earlier kind of leads you through that path of of being awake not woke, too woke, too awake to be woke, right? And so woke is first fail stuff. We're out of that. But um, but when you get there, right? So you don't end up like one of these people who uh, you know, are are, are spouting off bad information coming out of the second veil, the alternative narrative, right? Um, and what I'm trying to show people is like you, that there is another awakening you have to go through. That's the point. But as you have conversations with people, you can go back into my catalog. And use my videos as resources to to debate issues with people or talk about issues or like I forgot I for, I don't know much about this or I forgot about this, but uh, you can almost guarantee that I've I've, I've probably covered it at this point um, in terms of uh, the big ones, right? The big ones. So I have a lot of material out there. You can always browse through them and then you know throw them on a playlist or throw them in a you know a quick and easy access for yourself. So like if you are one of those people who engage in deep conversations about topics with people and maybe you get into the conspiracy realm and you, and you want to show them how to debunk something that they swear to God is true. Like, you know, the, the, the moon landing hoax or some of the BS, uh, you know, I, I generally have a program or, uh, I've done, I've covered the topic and I got a whole show on it that you can skim through and review, uh, and grab the points out of it. Right. So it's all there for you. And, um, and hopefully that's big, that's a big help. And then for those that just want to kind of understand it better, you can watch the whole series. Uh, I think I, I think I do okay on a little bit of faster speed, so you can probably speed it up a little bit too. Hey, little outpost nerd with a new icon. Where's R two D two? Put him back. <laughs> that's right. Like getting a new haircut, and people are going, "Oh, that's nice." Oh, look at this. We got some new members. All right, let's do this then. Uh, we're gonna get to the video here in a second, but we got to take care of business, y'all. We got to take care of business, and that's what we're gonna do. And here it comes. It's cold. A big long bit not in hand to do. I can't run in the most beautiful thing. It's cold. I can tell you all about it. I mean, look at this thing. When I try to get out of anything. All right. Welcome to the Winner Circle. Scott Free Freedom. And it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's 10th return. <laughs> God is a popular person to get uh, gifted memberships. News 916, hanging out with us last time. So happy you are uh, got a membership just done. All right, cool. Latin A, Latin A, awesome. I'm so happy that you have a um, got a membership too. And Sue, uh, and Latin A, if you happen to hear this, uh, you did say you got it. I caught it last time you said that you, like, right as my show was ending, uh, you said you had a Discord, but I don't know how to reach you. So if you wanted to do something, I need to find out. We need to find a way to communicate. So, um, if you stop by, uh, ask somebody for a link to the to my Discord, or just look me up on Winning Reality, and um, and whisk whisk talk. Right? I don't, I'm not trying to uh, miss out or blow you off on that. I just I, things get busy, and I just caught that as I was going off the air last time, and I haven't seen you since. So I'm just letting you know. All right, let's get back to it. Thank you again, Shelly, for the five gifted memberships, and welcome everybody. All right, here we roll. On January 6th, now the top story oh, is mean, rights roll it back a little bit. media for obsessing over Russia Gate and Trump's tweets and the mostly peaceful protests at the Capitol. See, all the things he's talking about right off the bat, these are all psyops. 
like and, and it's so funny that the con that the second veiled conspiracy dedicated conspiracy theory theory people and i hate having to call it like that right but i call you know what we do conspiracy realism uh and that's open conspiracy realism like it's you know we talk about the real things the real things that you can you can see that are happening that are affecting us on a daily basis we don't talk about weird things like uh that aren't right that have no purpose and that are all speculation and usually just lies um so and that's unfortunate because people grasp onto it and usually either either they're grifting or it's a state of confusion or they're just lazy or they're so set in their ways they don't realize they're acting just like they acted when they were in the first veil that's the sad part that's the sad part but um anyways everything he just named rolling into this is a psyop january 6th narrative right it's like i've and this is what i just said on um over to to legal vices i will pull this up at the end this this twitter uh this tweet this tweet x this x post um that he made when i commented back on to him on but literally it put everything into perspective like the the, the psyops the conspiracies are the psyops like they are like they become the psyops because they think should they um because they they help they help the establishment discredit the people that are dissident to their narrative right people that are outside of their narrative oh they're they're all crazy tin full of hat wearers how many times have you guys heard that right so you could be talking about something and now they group everything together so if you're saying that you know that agenda 2030 is bad for us then they're going to call you a conspiracy theorist and then equate you to all of the trash that's out there right what are you some kind of flat earther what are you some kind of this with something like that they're going to throw all of it out there right so they it becomes a confusing thing right and that's exactly the way they want it so don't even don't kid yourself that's exactly the way they want it this is this is the design of the the, the alternative narrative in their opinions how you think they're just gonna sit back and let people uh you know run with things and and not take advantage of it you know every crisis establishment never lets a crisis go to waste and neither, neither do conspiracy grifters and they both pretty produce mind control victims e equally right like that guy that came to my to my comments and uh without even watching the video on the uh the, ba the baltimore bridge collapse uh not, without even watching it like totally made an, an idiot out of himself unfortunately it's sad because i'm really trying to help people from do not doing that the um and say that uh you know it was a ukrainian pilot and then literally dropped the link to the video that i debunked in my video so you can know you know that person didn't watch it they probably just dropped that link un un unfollowed and left and that's sad for them and that's the damage of the conspiracy grip right so here you have this very closed-minded person who thinks they're very open-minded and have it all figured out but yet they're just being they're just being led around uh you know by a different uh leash right they're just being led around by a different hook in their mouth and um that's the unfortunate thing and that's why um you know basically why i exist here right um, you know it's maybe i evolved to something else maybe i evolved to a new media person that I say, well, there has to be someone like me in the new media if everybody's going to come out and and run with these uh, and get, have these conversations. But you know, this group of upper echelon new media, you know, they do know each other and do talk to each other somewhat. If I can get into that crowd, I could be effective. You know, I could be effective in the conversations with people that um, are at a place where they can actually listen, right? And they feel some some responsibility for the information that they put out to others, like I do. So, um, oh, let me get this off. Okay. So, um, so anyways, yeah. The tinfoil hat doesn't fit well between my ears. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the sad part about it is you get mixed in with these, these, these off the wall things. Right. And, um, and then that's that, that we need to put a barrier up between those. There needs to be a place where there is you know a, a a truth in the middle that's going to be like that's going to be the fifth veil that's going to be the one that takes hopefully wipes out all the other veils and replaces it into a, a, a honest world right um but we have to have real integrity media we have to have truth in, and we have to have integrity integrity and be better than the establishment media and if all you're doing are, is producing more mind control victims and all you're doing is shutting down your mind and being very closed-minded about uh how you approach investigating things and understanding things and how you your perception is you're, you're really no different than the first veil that's why i've said there are two sides of the same coin the first and second veil um and what we have to do is understand that and navigate through it to see the big to see what's really going on 
because all the real all the real stuff that we need to be worried about and all the real control mechanisms and everything are buried behind that so if you have uh you know hundreds of thousands of people subscribe to a channel that's trying to um convince them like for example that the baltimore bridge was some kind of cyber attack when the ship doesn't it doesn't even connect to the internet uh you know we don't have any diagnostics on the land itself and if you're talking about some kind of master virus that uh, took over the ship and then knew to exactly when to do it and when to steer it in without any uh without any um help we are probably talking about the most sophisticated virus on earth so you know there, there's ways to, to to sort through these things but you're never going to hear a, a place like redacted who is running with this narrative constantly now it's sad because they do do some do some good work and like i said i don't necessarily uh throw everybody out just because they're making big mistakes i'd rather be i'd rather have a chance to talk to them right um but i certainly won't show any of their stuff when they're doing pulling that bull, bull bs you know we're talking about wef the un things like that they had a good interview with somebody on there like james bruner or something like that yeah i'll show it and i'm like like i said you know i have to give them the bit of that because we if anything we're all at least on the one side that's the anti-establishment side and even if they don't see the full picture they're helping in that fight so i don't want to throw people out you know i want to i want to you know let them throw themselves out by not being reasonable enough to have a conversation that'll that'll do it in itself because that's the way that most people on the side are well you know okay i'll listen to you but when you we won't have a reasonable conversation or at least rather know the truth than be right like be able to change your mind have an open mind then be able to change it when you need to you know people on this side eventually aren't really tolerant of that unless they're really into the grift but they're really under another form i mean think about it how hard is it to communicate with somebody who is convinced that the democrats are the good guys and the republicans are the bad guys and all they do is watch cnn msnbc and all these other establishment media outlets thinking that the narrative they get hey pass legit how you doing welcome thinking that what they're getting is is the um unabashed truth right and um they're not willing to even consider the fact that they may be getting smoothed again anyways let's continue this here we go on january 6th now the top stories are always about what's going on in the middle east and now trump's trial has started but thankfully in these tough times brian stelter is still doing interviews with podcasts that nobody knows of and nobody cares of to talk about his book about fox news that nobody read it's not just hold on, hold on before we get to the comedy there yeah and like the the, the trump trials the russia collusion clip uh, collusion hoax right and what's going on these days these tr these this witch hunt that's going on these are these are psyops too right but they don't get called out as psyops right but you know something we can't that's unprovable that has very poor information backing up like the baltimore bridge that that psyop you know people think it's a psyop that goes around the world right like people are like that that's some places are just grifting heavy off that idea yet we have provable psyops right in front of our face all the time that don't get labeled appropriately. Like the, we can go back to the 9-11 days and talk about the weapons of mass destruction. That was a psyop, right? That was completely a psyop to convince us to manufacture our consent for war. We were already in a in a malleable state with, with the attacks on the World Trade Center, right? As a country, very malleable state. And then they come right in right and get us right on board with this let's go get somebody for it right and you know that, that that's a psychological operation in terms of just taking something that happened and then spinning it and, and manipulating it in such a way that an agenda gets fulfilled right that a narrative gets built and i think maybe a lot of these these establishment psyops that that again never get called out for what they are um i think a lot of these uh spawn the conspiracy theories right they spawn them and people think it's the other way around like they're figuring something out right we're gonna figure it out but then you then you, you there's none of these things really stand the test of time do they once the investigations are through once the uh you know more information is clear on the facts once you start to see through the game that the establishment's playing you understand why these conspiracy theories get get uh pumped out like they do right they're just kind of left there if they're really you know concerned about this an intelligent person would look at this and be like okay so how do we stop these if we really are concerned about them well first you need to do better journalism and you need to 
have you need to be concerned about what other people are concerned about. And maybe it seems silly to you at first, right? And I get it. If the if you explain it to them reasonably and they don't uh they they don't um even listen to you, they just want to you know be right. Uh if they don't even consider the information and, and they just it, it can get frustrating. You might not want to deal with that person. You put out a broad explainer, right? And then when you put out a broad explainer, uh trying to explain uh the, the what seem like anomalies or what seemed like was left out of the initial reporting, you know, people come back and don't, don't even consider that even, or look into it themselves to check to see if it's right. There again, that's another way that these things just, just propagate and continue like um, S hook and so on. Right. Uh, that's, that's a big one that everybody remembers because it, it did so much damage to freedom of speech, didn't it? And, and, um, and censorship thrived under that. And, you know, you have other things that kind of cloak, go down that same, you know, crisis actor, state of the event narrative, false narrative, false narrative that, um, that was, that was out there, like sucking people into this conspiratorial mindset when they couldn't prove a goddamn thing. It's all their eyes are lying eyes, right? They did, they just, they run with it and they end up affecting people's lives that are in, in, in very traumatic states. Um, you know, the victims and they start blaming things. They have no right to do these things. They're not, you know, they're no authority and they're not they're not working in truth yet they can uh they can summon an army uh of people that are i guess just want someone to tell them what to think right instead of what i try to do here is teach people how to think about these things and see by showing them how the game is rigged show them how the psyops work showing them how with proof how these things these con the conspiracy theories have gotten legs and run um, don't hold any water, right? And where they're fat, where the fallacies are located. And some of these people, the people don't like that. Some people, you know, I talk about like, you know, people not liking what I have to say in the first veil because I'm spitting the truth at them about that. But then the second veil is even, you know, it gets even more complicated because they think they've already got it. And that's why I kind of try to tell people there's a second awakening. There's not just one, there's two because we have, we're in this mire here, right? Where it's an information war. And um, there's something going on beyond these this this surface level uh, information war, right? And there's a reason why there's a, an information war going on, right? It's to win hearts and minds, or to dis discredit the those who cannot conform, right? It's to go after the. That doesn't mean that everything that people don't, the people that don't conform, are saying is true, right? It just means that th they'll run with that narrative, they'll push that narrative out, and let them completely. Uh, demonize or discredit themselves, right? Although they're happy to do that because that does exactly what they want those people uh, to those people exactly what they want done, right? Make their their voices in, uh, uh, invalid, like you know, unlistenable. That's what they want. So they they love it. They love the conspiracy theories. Don't think that they don't. They absolutely do because it helps them in every single way. That's why we have to live in truth. You know, that's why we have to go after what is attainable right you go after the the, the real agenda you, you focus energy on that you talk about that you dismiss the other ones and hopefully one day we'll have all the media uh, new media outlets kind of like understanding that so that we don't have these ongoing uh psyop enablements like people spreading this whole idea that there was a cyber attack on the baltimore bridge it's it's freaking impossible and even the people that are pushing it every day and getting, God, so many views compared to, uh, you know, others um, and getting memberships and getting uh, financial support all off the backs of what are, what is this speculation lies and bad sources, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, uh, hopefully they will, will see the value in being more truthful and be more patient in the future. Well, we can only hope. But if you can't get into the conversation with these people and actually have a, uh, a debate and let people see the difference, right? If they're closed off, it makes you wonder what they're really up to. It makes you wonder if they are uh, in, it, in it for the cause or in it for themselves, you know? It's okay to be a little bit of both, but I mean, if you're all the way in it for yourself, then you won't care what you tell people and how you spread it. So let's get back to this. Hey, Daisy Girl Williams, how you doing? It's about the characters heard and it's about the villains that the cinema that nobody knows of and nobody cares of to talk about his book about Fox News that nobody read. 
it's not just about the characters hurt and it's about the villains that the cinematic universe creates. I like to think that I'm a, a bit character in that universe. Uh, I once had a potato mailed to me. It came in a FedEx box, like an actual potato. It's because within the Fox universe, I used to be called Humpty Dumpty. And from there, it became I wonder why. a potato. A potato head. A gender neutral potato head, to be clear. <laughs> and so when I get random tweets from people calling me Spud, I know that... People call him a tater. He can't even get the story straight. They're in that in-group because it's their way of communicating communicating to each other that they're in on the i guess in this case it's a joke but it's also an insult you know look at the background he oh god what a picture in the background of stelter he has a poster that says has trump and tucker carlson on there it says network of lies <laughs> well you're on the right track little Ryan, his book, you huh? are a joke and may i remind you that when his book came out in november there it is. network of lies the epic saga of fox news donald trump and the battle for american democracy it was hyped up by the entire liberal media ecosystem including him getting invited in studio on CNN, despite the network having fired him for obviously being a laughing stock, and it still didn't even break into the Amazon top 100 bestseller list. It did make it up to number 133. Watch this very closely. While, of course, yours truly did make it to number four, my book was released right around the same time. Of course, it would have been nice to make it to number one, but I am just a guy in my kitchen on a laptop going up against some heavy hitters like Britney Spears had her memoir come out and Barbara Streisand. But it was number four, which I still consider to be a tremendous success. All the other news going on is rather depressing, which is why I posted an old Man on the Street episode yesterday. Technically, it was a new episode. I hadn't posted it before, but it was something I shot a long time ago. I just never got around to editing because Donald Trump's criminal trial started over the payments to Sloppy Daniels, which is expected to take six to eight weeks. Over the weekend, he heard Iran tried to attack Israel. So now... Ben Shapiro and friends, the fellow neocons, are all just salivating for Israel to respond. Lindsey Graham hit Iran now, hit them hard. Senator John Corbyn, target Tehran. Ask not what you can do for your country. Ask what your country can do for Israel. And while the liberal media will be obsessing 24-7 over Donald Trump's trial, yesterday there was the rumblings of the Marxist insurrection with pro-Palestinian activists blocking the Golden Gate Bridge. Does anybody disagree that stuff like this is a psyop? I mean, do all psyops have to come from directly from the government? I don't think so. It's just a psychological operation. Anybody can run one. You know, that's the whole thing too. I think archetypally, because we originally kind of get the idea from government psyop, right? We don't think about the fact that other people can run them on us. So that that kind of like that thought kind of just it. It should be there, but it's not. It kind of just flies over, right? So, it you know, retrain yourself to see that PSYOPs aren't just government. They can be run by subversive groups um, and, and don't have to even be run by our government, do they? Right? They can be run by any group or any individual that so wants to run uh, a psychological operation and actually has the means and the, the ability to do it. <laughs> you know? So when you when you... Remember how we learned about manufactured protests? Like that's back on one of my um, unveiling realities uh, from this year, right? I have it's right there in the front. Manufactured protests, I think that's the name of it or something. Um, and I talked about how they had that website, right? And all you have to do, really, you can run a you can run a protest from anywhere in the world. All you do is go sign up them and to this website, put out there what you want to, and then people can literally go and sign up for this. It goes out to a mailing list or goes out to whoever signed up for these things. Um, and then they, they're they alerted, hey, there's going to be a protest. And then they go, go here to get your signs. Go here to, to pick up your, your your materials. Dress like this. Do this. Do that. They have all the instructions right there. The people that, pick, that put the, the, the Palestinian, pro-Palestinian uh, protests together, as was discovered in that investigation, uh, there's only a handful of people, maybe three, I think three women who, who do it in the whole country. Uh, now that may be, there may be others, right? But three major ones that put on these pro-Palestinian, uh, uh, pro, quote unquote, protests. Well, these are just psyops, right? These are psychological operations. They're they're meant to have a psychological effect on people for an agenda. So why aren't they called psyops, right? But you know, if you speculate about a boat that can't get on the internet being taken over by some kind of hack or some kind of master super uh, intelligent virus that is beyond anything we've ever seen um and then precisely timing um a collision with a bridge that precisely um you know that that somehow they knew was going to bring the whole thing down i mean it's just it's just so ridiculous when you get into the mud like this but again why aren't things like the, the this bridge being blocked 
right? Why aren't these called psyops, right? Well, they're just well, they're just protests. Then you see, if you say protest, people just it goes, it's gone, it's gone, right? You, it, but if it's psyop, oh, we're gonna dig into that. We got, you know, so people are digging into the these 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 things that are called psyops that aren't, you know, that aren't, and then they aren't digging into the ones that are. Like, look, think about um, think about uh, Radix Verum, right? And what she's been doing with the Fed, mer the Fed napping in Michigan. Uh, she's she's put her time, effort, and money, um, and life on you know into this documentary, and she uh, and she's having such a hard time getting support to get this documentary out. That's going to be so informative and so unveiling for so many people about the the operations that these 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 Fed traps are and how they how they rope people in, how they get people to become patsies, right? Even if they don't go through with it, and they're still you know. They're still set up to be optics, and they're set up to, um, to then suffer for this, for this manipulation they've fallen into, right? Total psyop, psychological warfare. It's psychological, meant to have a psychological effect and fulfill an agenda, right? So um, there you have it. But it's not called that, right? People are spending more time and energy trying to figure uh, these days, trying to figure out whether a, a boat that can't get on the internet somehow was hacked and uh, stirred into a bridge, and oh. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute too. Um, you know, the the big news of the day in terms of that and why people are going to then be reignited. And I'm going to show you as well that when the establishment media gets involved, they're nudging, they're nudging the the, the psyop for, forward. Now, now the narrative, the false narrative becomes the psyop, right? So they're nudging that psyop forward. Keep people keep people occupied. Keep people from talking about the things that matter. Keep people discredited that may talk about things that matter, right? Maybe get mixed up in that in that world. Is that a psychological operation? You bet. Why? Well, it's meant to um, have a, have a, a psychological effect on individuals and fulfill an agenda, and it does. It's that it, it it's like, it's not hard to figure out when you just kind of like lay logic on the line, right? So again. This 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 bridge thing, right? This protest that started happening. They blocked off the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Pro-Palestinian activists who, if, if Palestinians were here, wouldn't like any of them that were out there, probably at all. Uh, but they're doing it, right? They're doing it. Psych ops, right? Psych ops. Let's see. Uh, the the way they say the FBI and Coast Guard are now investigating is disingenuous. Yes. They were from the beginning. They, they always do. Yep, on camera, well before Biden. It's rid ridiculous. Of course they do. You just you know they're going to be. It's going to be investigated, and it's going to be investigated by all kinds of different people. Uh, so yeah, why is that a big deal? Oh, see now. Oh, oh. It, this is that now they're going to cover their ass with this. But I'll, I'll get into this more in a second. That's a, we're we're a little bit ahead of ourselves there. Let's go ahead and watch this. Blocking the Brooklyn Bridge and blocking the entrance to Chicago's O'Hare Airport. Every single one of these people should be. Yeah, look at this. Like, okay, why is this a this why is this allowed to go on? Why is this allowed to go on? It's having a psychological effect on everybody back here. You think anybody? is now more pro-Palestinian because these people were out there? Sentenced to at least 10 years in prison. Look at this. Laying this over top of someone's car? Maybe it's their car. I have no idea. I mean, obviously, they would, they're smart. They drive their own cars up there and stop them, but I don't know. These people are very smart. And look at how few people were there doing this. I don't see a big mob here. I mean, I, I think later on it got to that point. But this seems to be the daytime version of it. There's another one. There's another video where they stole a, someone's car and started doing donuts in it. I don't know if it's the same one or not. Um, we'll see. Think of all the damage that they're doing, stopping people from going to work, from getting to job. Yeah, look, it's just these people, and they're wearing they're wearing these uh, vests, so it makes them look like they're workers. Yeah, that's in, that's impersonating. That's impersonation right there. You see a lot of these yellow vests. Interviews from catching flights, people missing funerals for loved ones. Master. There are emergency workers. Mind control victim right here in the front, right? And what's this? I don't know what this is. Hard to hard to see. Hard to see what that is. And why is it facing this way? This is the this is facing this way for the cameras. People behind them can't see it. So this is for optics, optics, optics. See, none of them are facing towards the traffic. They're all facing this way. 
So when the camera sees it, boom. So this is for ops that just can't get through now because of the blockage. Can't bring people to the hospital. And who, and who suffers because of it? Everybody that has trying to get to the trying to get to work, trying to get to the hospital to see somebody, trying to get their kids somewhere. All these people suffer because of these idiots who have been who've been uh, who've been activated. Oh, can't get fire trucks through. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators yep. shut down airport highways and key bridges in major U.S. cities. Okay, so yeah, so it was more than one spot. So there was one bridge where they actually literally ripped somebody out of their car, took their car, and started doing donuts on the bridge in the car. Right? That's the kind of thing that... And then what what happened... I think Tim Poole was talking about it. And, and he said, like, what, this is what happens when people uh, when people don't fear the law, when there's no police, so there's no there's no consequences for actions, right? a coordinated effort. So where is the Department of Homeland Security? Where is the Justice Department in launching an investigation into them, into tracking down their social media posts, into indicting them for committing the conspiracy to obstruct interstate commerce and countless other felonies that they committed? Harmeet Dillon made a very interesting revelation yesterday. She's a high-profile lawyer who's been involved with a bunch of different cases. And here she is talking about her case when she represented Andy No, who is the investigative journalist best known for detailing and uncovering Antifa's activities. And after he was attacked, they sued a bunch of Antifa members in civil court. And this is what she said just yesterday about what she learned during the case of that suit. I sued Antifa over attacking our client, Andy No. Um, some of the characters who were involved in the mob that attacked him showed up fomenting Antifa riots in other parts of the country. They were clearly well-funded, mm -hmm. not ragtag, not from the heart. This is a underground militia attacking Americans all over the country. But don't worry, my fellow Americans, because the new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Charles Q. Brown Jr., is on a mission for diversity, equity, and inclusion. One of the goals here is actually, how do we get uh, more African-Americans in position of leadership, in positions of, of in aviation? And, and, and that's one of the challenges. And that's one of the top challenges that the U.S. military is facing these days. There aren't enough black pilots. Also, there are still too many straight people, normal people, in the U.S. military, despite President Obama repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and then recruiting the rainbow people. And so for those who are still in the military, now they're getting lectured by people like this in order to try to make it more diverse and inclusive. All too often, I hear leaders talk about providing everyone with dignity and respect like this it's an aspirational goal. Embarrassing. This is not a Saturday Night Live skit. This is a real high-ranking Air Force officer. That's not good enough. <laughs> Dignity and respect is the bare minimum. You will respect this person's preferred pronouns. It's the floor of where we can be. We must set our sights higher and focus on intentional inclusivity because there are still far too many people out there, not just LGBTQ individuals, that feel marginalized, shut out, or discriminated against. Oh. So for all of you out there, I ask you to set out your symbols of pride, share your pronouns in your email, particularly if you're a person who doesn't think they need to. Are they trying to get us to side with- Pro, pro subversion, right? That's all subversive talk. This is, a, this is an agent of subversion right here. See, it's subverting, subverting. Get out, your, get out your marketing materials. Get out your, get, get out your virtue signals, right? Subvert the public, subvert, the, socially engineer them with us. Help us socially engineer them. This is what he's saying. This is an agent of subversion sitting in there. What is it? A colonel? Is that a colonel? Yeah, it looks like a colonel to me. Um, yep, sure. That's a colonel, if I remember right. A a anybody else who I, I I think I remember my Air Force ranks. I'm pretty sure that's a colonel. Anyways, that's that's it's an embarrassment. I know that. It's an embarrassment because what is this person talking about? National security, how to better the military and make it stronger. No, they're talking about how to subvert people further, and uh, and they're giving a, they're giving a platform, and they're be, they're giving credit they're giving credibility that this is the way it should be. Can you imagine? Like, I mean, I was talking, I was thinking about this earlier, right? And the difference, the difference between my generation and the generation today is that I was raised by parents that were raised during in a moral a moralized society within their lifetime and within mine we become a demoralized society and that is the main difference of what's going on as far as you know being raised by individuals go like we were given a lot of leeway and freedom uh 
and too much, obviously, and too much, not enough direction in our lives because our parents didn't have that fear, right? They didn't have the understanding uh, of the things that we have to be aware of in this generation who, who was raising children, right? The, um, they, they were they were raised in a time with morality, where morality was the norm, not de- not not lack of morality, right? Yes, there was degeneracy, of uh, course, right? But it was frowned upon. It was not the it was not the norm. Now, degeneracy, demoralized society has been been normalized. So the normalization process of de- that has has been completed, right? So we're fighting a whole different kind of battle here. And we have to be a lot more on top of things, a lot more involved as parents, or our children will suffer when they're adults. They'll be tra- in the trap, right? That's the difference. Our, our, you know, the boomer parents, of people who blame it on the boomers, blame it on the the silent generation, right? That's that's the, that's the generations that are left here in the in the elder in the golden years, right? But it's not their fault. They were raised by in a moralized society. You know, the difference was is during the time between the time that they were kids and became parents. The, the society became more and more demoralized. And while they saw it, they didn't realize the long-term implications of the, that on children and, and, and so on. Right. So they have, they were in a weird transitional kind of spot as, uh, as the, as the parent or as a child rearing generation where they didn't know that they needed to be a little bit more on the ball about things. They, they figured, well, things will just work out and we always find a way. Well, they have that old mentality and that, that the establishment had changed that. By the time that they are their kids were, were out there and in, in, in childhood and going to school, that was slowly being changed on them while they were out there working and and, and doing the things that adults and parents do to to provide for their family. And they're modeling their own their own parents in a lot of ways, uh, the work ethic, the, um, you know, the, the roles and, and then how, you know, let the children learn. And as they go, let them take the bumps and take the uh, and learn the hard lessons. These days, you don't a hard lesson. You may it may ruin the rest of your life. And it's not like that. It wasn't like that when they grew up. So that was that's the really the big difference that's happened over the course of at least my lifetime and, and my father and my mother's lifetime um, is that we've we've gone from a moralized society to a demoralized society. And this is the this is the out this is the output we're dealing with today. So yeah, we're in, and we're looking at this this person cosplaying um, and, and sitting in a position of power in our military, and then just promoting the further subversion. And they're asking others and their 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 peers dislike them and others to to participate, and and maybe to their own demise. Maybe if they don't participate, there's this is a type of leverage they put over top of them. But yeah, we have to get control back over this stuff. This is why 2024 is so important. We have to get control over our our government again, or we're never going to be able to clean things up um, in a legal way, right? And so we have our responsibility on our end as uh, to to address the social issues. And to be the examples and social issues and to lead the charge there, right? But we also have to elect the right people that will help get the corruption out of the political system. There's there's a three-pronged approach going on here, right? There's there's social, there's political, and then there's future prevention. So we all ha- we have to be on top of all of that. And that's that's solution culture working. That's in the modern anti-establishment uh, paradigm, right? So, anyways, our paradigm. That's a, a configuration. That's the way that we that's the way that we're gonna win. Um, and that's the way that we're gonna lose if we don't do that with Russia and China in World War III. I'm not going to do that. I will always side with America because these people are not America. If you sign up to join the U.S. military these days, these are the kinds of people who you're going to be assigned to live with in the barracks. Or maybe even as your right, or in That's your right. unit or your squad or whatever they call it. Look it, at this. I mean, seriously, dude. There's nothing that you'll be able to do about it. You make fun of them, you get in trouble. You crack up the Bible. These, these guys are going to be busy playing with each other why, why something important is going to happen and you know then we're they we're going to suffer it's like this is not do you think that these guys are intimidating uh our enemies <laughs> they're, too, they're like you guys are so right for the taking give it another generation or two and they'll just they'll fall on their own read certain scripture in their presence and you will get court-martialed and notice it's mostly republicans who bent over for this because after obama repealed don't ask don't tell every single republican in congress went completely silent about the issue but they still fought against the board that's that's because in obama's time and you know this mark i'm just gonna help you out with this because in, in obama's time the left-right paradigm was still in it was still in full effect we had not crushed it yet we were more aware of it than ever thanks to Ron Paul, 
right? And thanks to a growing Ron Paul revolution who now makes up the MAGA movement, plus, you know, all the other people that have joined on. Uh, but, you know, why did they not say anything? Because you had people like Mitt Romney and, and John McCain, uh, you know, in charge of the GOP at those, those, those times, right? You had the Bushes still around. You had the neocons were still like, you know, sitting there arrogant as can be, thinking that they had the whole world, world fooled into the, and they did. They were they, they were real Republicans, right? Not just establishment tools, right? Playing the heel on the right to to make the false left paradigm happen. This is why nobody said anything. Other people said anything. I mean, Ron Paul said things about this, but you know, he was he was silenced. He was pushed aside. He was minimized because he was one of the few at the time. Abortion for fifty years, never accepting Roe versus Wade, but the LGBTQ people in the military. They went right along with that because they're cowards, the kinds of supposed Christians that God spits out of his mouth because they're this is a this is an abomination towards women. I mean, I look at the look at the godliness, the over godliness of everything. The people think this is this is a tribute to women. It's not. There's no women that would wear an earring like that. That's that that's that looks like a chandelier, actually, or, or a ring like that. This is this is it's called overdoing it to make clown it. They're clowning women, and that that's the embarrassing part. They're lukewarm. Which reminds me, the Christ is King shirt, which you can get from markdice.com, is now available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a woman's tee as well, and right. a whole bunch of different colors. Thanks, so Mark. head on over to markdice.com or click the Do link it. in the description below. Mark's, check been it out. Working hard. Mark's been working hard on his his merch and his game for a long time. And, dude, definitely, uh, if you don't support him, man, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Not We're not 100% on everything, but I guarantee you if I ever had a conversation with him, it would be a damn good one. You know, it would be a damn good one. So, um, like I said, I was going to really do a lot of anal an analysis at the beginning here. It's such a now. Here's the deal: because of the that, I'm going to split this this conversation into two parts, okay? And I have a second video, but I'm going to save it, and it's right here, um, where we're going to talk about um, what went on with Trump today, uh, secret spying centers, and then the global, the global anti-establishment, like how that is a goal and goal for. Uh, you know, it's not just us that are it's fighting this bullshit. It's people like us all over the world that are fighting this bullshit, mainly in, um, you know, Euro Eurocentric nations right now. I mean, that's the battle we're fighting in America and in Europe, um, in places like that, right? We're fighting this this subversion war, right? And then you have uh, more hostile wars going on in the Middle East and Africa, and uh, and then you have places that are completely locked down like uh, Russia and China, right? And of course, Russia is fighting their own border war. So there's, it's not just us that has establishment issues. It's, it's, it's our type, our kind of people all around the world. And they come in all different, um, they come in all different races and they come in all different nationalities. Uh, there are people just like you and me and countries all over the world right now that are fighting evil and fighting t tyranny and fighting um, for their freedom. And going into tonight's chapter, um, and the Great Awakening is perfect timing. Uh, the Eternal War of the Tyrants. And I believe, I have not read this yet, of course, I'll always wait for you guys, but I believe um, this is going to talk about um, maybe in, in his own words, the generational warfare that I've been talking about since I started here on, and long before that, but you know, to you guys. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to find out tonight, but we should go ahead and get on with that. Uh, and head on over. I'm going to take a few more comments here on the topic, and then we're going to head on out over there. Um, I remember Clinton's don't ask, don't tell being such a big deal. So much controversy. I know, right? Who would have thought that such a slippery slip would have happened? Swab expired yet? Because he needs to. <laughs> I don't know. There's rumors, but, you know, there's rumors. Um, you can't, you can't, Ukraine is throwing a tantrum that we sent better aid to Israel. Isn't that a bitch? Right? Of course, because we're the cash cow for them. If Paul was alive, to, who are you talking about? Ron Paul is very much alive. I don't know. What, I don't know which Paul you're talking. Paul Revere? Not sure which one you're talking about, dude. All right, guys. So I'm going to save the second report. Uh, and we're more analysis for the end. So after we read of the Apostle Paul, okay, we'll, you know. We just say Ron Paul here, and then if Paul were stuck, you know, it's chat. What can, what can I say? All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to do our jump to free speech platforms.
That is Rumble and X. And we're already over there, but we're just leaving the kickoff show here on YouTube. And thanks to everybody who came out to help uh, make the kickoff show happen. Um, I like to do these to give people a chance to find us and to pop in and to pop in and maybe join us and maybe join Rumble or X and follow us over there. So that we um they can join us for the reading. I have a complete playlist in the rumble description for every chapter of this book. So if you're behind, a lot of people missed last week's for some reason. Uh, so if you need to catch up, those chapters are all in the playlist in the very first top, very part of the, the, the rumble description. You can find the playlist, the rumble playlist with all of the um all of the uh great awakening chapters in there. And I also have one from the previous book called The Control of Garks. And uh, that um, is also out there for you. So there's two playlists you can uh, read a complete book out of. And this one we're halfway through. So let's get over to Rumble so we can start talking about the book and start doing our reading. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being part of the kickoff show. And I hope to see you over there. Um, so let's go. And everyone's tensed up for a Rumble.